Hi, my name is Orkin Macias, and this and I'm from Brahman University, and this is my presentation on asthma. So for my patient demographics, I have a 20-year-old um, patient who's Caucasian, a female, and she is a college student. She comes in with a chief complaint of asthma. Um, it presents in like unfit coughing, like uncontrolled fits of coughing. Uh, no known drug allergies, No past, uh, the only past medical history is asthma, no surgical history, um, not much social history. The only thing that I found was that she does risky behavior such as using a motorcycle. Uh, and her medication list is hydroxyzine, Ventolin, Zoloft, Adver, um, Monolucas, and Zyrtec. Some subjective information. So this female has been complaining of cough for the last two weeks and it's been daily and it's been getting worse. What's going on is that she doesn't have any health insurance, so she applied for Medicare and Medicaid, and the process is just really slow. And she has ran out of her Advair about a month ago, um, but on top of that, she's also been to the ER for about 13 times since uh, since January. So um, she's actually walked, she's both walked in and called the ambulance for that. Um, her asthma isn't severe where she has wheezing, but she does have a lot of coughing fits. Uh, and she's also close to running out of her albuterol because she's using it about four times a day. Some further questioning on her, she's never seen a pollenologist before. Usually her PCP has been controlling, but since she's been in college, she hasn't been able to see her uh, primary care provider. Um, at the time of the clinic, she has no wheezing, no shortness of breath, no fevers, chills, or any night sweats. And she does report that she had a cold at the beginning of the month, but it, it went away. Some objective information, if we look at her focus assessment, she does have the frequent dry coughing. Her lungs are clear to auscultation bilaterally, and she does have normal effort. And she doesn't have any cardiac issues that we can tell. So her heart sounded fine, there's no swelling, there's no um, edema, no murmurs that we heard, and she could walk fine, um, no dyspnea as well. Uh, and also, if you notice, her O2 sat is 99%, and that is on room air. So for her assessments, we're going to cross out some differential diagnosis. Uh, we do have the cough, which is the symptoms, and I would probably diagnose her with cough if she didn't already have the history of asthma. But since she has a history of asthma, we kind of know what is the, the cause of the cough. There's no COPD because she is on room air uh, at 99%. There's no CHF because her car she doesn't have any cardiac history or any cardiac, um, any cardiac uh, issues. Uh, there's no PE because there's no like pain on either side. Um, actually, she didn't report of any pain, just the coughing. Um, and no difficulty breathing. Her airway's fine. I mean, her um, breathing is good except for the coughing. No vocal cord dysfunction. She doesn't have any hoarseness or laryngitis or any type of infection that we can tell. Um, her, her temperature was normal. Uh, no GERD, no history of ulcers or heartburn. Um, or having to need any Tums or anything like that. And cough secondary to drugs, uh, there's no ACE inhibitors involved, there's no um, other drugs that have the side effects of cough, um, so that we could rule out that differential. So for right now, the only thing that we could see is asthma. So for evidence-based guideline treatments, the first step is to determine her severity of her asthma using a stepwise approachment. So part of it is using spirometry, how frequent her symptoms are, do they awake her at nighttime, is she using a short-acting beta antagonist for her symptom controls, um, which she is, but she just ran out, um, and any type of how frequent her exacerbations are. So as we can tell with this uh, little graph here, her, her asthma is very poorly controlled. Um, she has coughing throughout the day. She's using her inhaler um, very frequently. Um, she's been going to the ER about 13 times a month. Um, so it's just, I mean, 13 times since January. So it's just very, very poorly controlled. So if we look at her stepwise approachment, we're looking at either step five or six. Um, so she's preferred for her to use a high dose ICS um, ICS or a long-acting beta antagonist, um, and probably some sort of uh, corticosteroid. Uh, so, but then since she ran out of her, um, since she ran out of her Advair, uh, obviously she's her her control for her daily asthma isn't there. 
So some patient education, um, just to tell her the difference between the medications. Um, so the, it, the first point I have down is teaching her about the long-term control medications, such as the Afer, um, and that's helping to produce, to re prevent with symptoms and reducing inflammation and take it daily. The reason why I put this first is because she could be, you know, I don't know why she didn't pick up the medication. She says she doesn't have copay. Um, she lacked the insurance yet, but she also bought a motorcycle around the same time that she stopped taking her Advair. So I don't know if her priorities were the motorcycle over the Advair, um, but I do know that that is what happened. And she's told me she, about a month ago, you know, about the same time as the Advair. So, uh, so I don't know if it's just like a, a priority thing, but she does know that she needs it. Um, and she is applying for Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, she just can't afford the copay to pick up the Advair. Um, so I just kind of re-educated the Advair portion of it um, and to pick up her medications. We also taught her about the quick relief, uh, relief medication. Her um, albuterol is not to be meant to be used more than twice a week. And it's definitely not meant to be used several times a day that she has been using. Um, and she does need to take her medications appropriately. Some other patient education um, that's always very common with asthma is to identify and avoid the triggers. Uh, she needs to monitor her asthma control, so it's one of those where they don't really think about it too much unless it like gives them issues. And so she needs to just see what her triggers are, she needs to make sure she's taking her medications, are the medications helping her, um, so just basically self-control and self-monitoring. I think a good idea for this patient is that she could use like a written asthma action daily plan. Um, and so this kind of lays out everything that she needs to do. And also kind of teach her about seeking appropriate medical care. So she's, you know, been going to the ER, but she hasn't actually seen a primary care provider until today for her asthma control. So, um, you know, it's, it's using the appropriate medical care as well. So some other patient education. So if you can see on the left-hand side, I talked about the asthma action plan. Um, this one is from, again, the um, National Institute for Health, Lung, and Blood. And so you could see that they gave you this beautiful little outline um, for it and the medications that we use. Uh, and then this also kind of helps put it in writing what she needs to do. Um, and then I listed on the right hand side some possible triggers that she could look at. She doesn't smoke, so we're okay with smoking, but she does live in the dorms. I don't know if she's around parties or, you know, lots of smoke. Um, you know, and then the other environmental things like dust, my standard cockroaches, vacuum cleaning, um, being outdoors. Uh, she did report hiking at some point. Um, exercise induced asthma is always very common. Um, cold air or sulfites in food are other triggers. So for the plan of care for this patient is to monitor her application for Medicare, Medi-Cal for insurance payments. Uh, she does report that they do retroactively pay for her um, for her care. So, uh, so during that encounter, we also decided to give her some albuterol and um, some ipratropium um, nebulizer, uh, just so that way she could, you know, stop coughing so much and feel a lot better. Uh, but we do highly, you know, we we did stress on picking up her Advair, even though it costs a lot. You know, maybe she could get some money from her from her parents. Um, I'm not sure which, uh, but she really does need that Advair. Um, so we also, so the next point, if you can see number four, her spirometry, um, baseline, uh, she reports that she hasn't had one done in many years. And so we were trying to do one in the clinic. Um, however, we couldn't, we couldn't quite do it in clinic. Um, she kept on failing. So we decided to, um, you know, we decided she was going to get a referral to pulmonology anyways for her um, pulmonary function test. So we just decided that they'll just do the spirometry once her her asthma is a little bit more controlled um, versus all these coughing fits in the clinic. Um, and so we also, so obviously we refer her to pulmonology for the pulmonary function test and further type of management. And um, lastly, to continue with her um, monolucast and albuterol um, as needed. Um, for her follow-up, um, also to return in about two weeks to see how she's doing, or as needed. And these are my references. Um, so you can see most of my information was a combination of two different resources, and the clinical guidelines that I got it from was the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. 
anyways i really appreciate you guys listening to my um my presentation you guys have a good rest of the summer